Live from San Francisco, it's theCUBE. Covering Google Cloud Next 19. Brought to you by Google Cloud and its ecosystem partners. Okay, welcome back everyone. We are here live in San Francisco for CUBE's coverage of Google Next 2019. I'm John Furrier, my co-host Dave Vellante, Stu Miniman also doing interviews. He's out getting, reporting and collecting all the data and we're going to bring it back on the queue. Our next two guests, Mark Ionelli, who's the Senior Technical Account Manager, AccuWeather, Ed Enough, who's the Director, Product Manager, Google Cloud Platform. Now, welcome back to the Cube, Ed. See Thank you. Thanks for coming on. Thank you. So you got a customer, big customer focus here this year, step function of just logos, growth, New announcements, technical, really good stuff. Yeah, yeah. What's going on, give us the update. API economy's well, here, full throttle. <laughs> I mean, it, you know, the great thing is it's uh, APIs on all fronts. So what you saw this morning was about standardizing the APIs that cloud infrastructure is based on. Uh, you saw, um, you know, how do we build applications uh, with APIs at a finer grained level, microservices, uh, you know, and, and we've had a lot of, uh, uh, great uh, customer examples of people using, and that's what, uh, you know, with AccuWeather here, talking about uh, how do you use APIs to service uh, and build uh, business models, reach developer ecosystems. So, uh, you know, as I look at everything today, it's uh, every aspect of it br brings it back home to APIs. It's all, it's interesting, it's so exciting because when you think about the service model of cloud and on-premise and now cloud, it's integration and APIs are key, key, and, all, and only getting more functional. Yep. Yeah. Talk about your implementation, AccuWeather. What are you guys doing with Apogee, Google Cloud? Just share what, what yeah. your implementation is. So AccuWeather's been running an API service for the past 10 years, and we have lots of enterprise clients. But we started to realize we were missing a whole business opportunity. So we partnered with Apogee, and we created a new self-serve API developer portal that allows developers to go in there, sign up on their own, and get started. And it's been great for us as far as like basically unlocking new revenue opportunities with APIs. Because as you said, everything is APIs. And we also say everything is impacted by the weather. So why not have everyone use AccuWeather APIs to fulfill their weather needs? What was it like early on when you guys were making this call? Was it more like experimenting? Did management have a clue? Were they like, use APIs? Was it, did it start grassroots? Nah, I mean, we knew right away. Like, we were working very heavily with our enterprise clients, but we wanted to really cater to the small businesses, to the individual developers, the weather enthusiasts, or students even. So we wanted to have this easy interface that instead of talking to a sales rep, you could just go through this portal and sign up on your own and get started. And we knew right away there was money to be left, or money to be had, money left on the table. So we knew right away by working with Apogee and creating this portal, it would run itself. Everyone uses APIs and everyone needs to weather. So to make it easier to find and use, and what's it, what's it like now? What's the, what's the outcome? It's, we've been using it now for about two years and it's, it's been very successful. We've, we've seen great revenue growth and more importantly, it's worked as a great sales channel for us because now instead of just going directly to an enterprise agreement and talking about legal terms and contracts, you can go through this incremental steps of sign up on your own, do a free trial, then you can buy a package. You can potentially increase your package and we can then monitor that, let them do it on their own and it allows us the ability to reach out to them and see, could this be a new uh, partner that we want to work with or is there a greater opportunity there? So it's been great for us as far as a lead generator and a sales channel to really yeah. get more revenue, more opportunities and just more and awareness. And change the old process, a whole new business model. Yeah, it's, it's a more awareness to AccuWeather APIs. Instead people are trying to find us, now it's out there and people see, great, now I can use it and get started. I'm interested in the back end. The National Weather Service, obviously, the government's putting up balloons yeah. and taking data, all, and they're presumably an input to your models. How are they connecting in to the APIs? Um, maybe describe that whole process. Well, yeah, so AccuWeather works with multiple uh, weather providers and government agencies from around the world. It's actually one of our strengths because we are a global company and we have those agreements with all kinds of countries from around the world. So we ingest all of that data into our backend database and then we surface it through our APIs to our end users. Okay, so they're not directly sort of plugging into that API economy yet? Are they, not yet, so they, we have to direct, get there? Or yeah. what, what, no, I mean, for now we have the direct data feeds that we're ingesting that data and then we make it available through the AccuWeather service and we kind of ingest that data with some of our own algorithms to kind of create our own AccuWeather forecast too. So that's actually a barrier to entry for you guys, the fact that you've built those pipelines from the back end and, yeah. and then you expose it at the front end and that's your business model, so. Yeah. Okay. Hey, talk about the, where, where it goes from here because this is a great example of Obviously the old way, papering, legal contracts. Now you go, hey, we're supposed to some APIs, um, exposing that data. Where does it go from here? Because now you've got 
as workloads get more complex. This is part of the whole announcement of the new rebranding and the new capabilities around Anthos, which yeah. is around, hey, you know, you can move complex workloads, certainly the serverless piece, we saw great news around that. So as it gets more complex, where does Apache go from here? How do these guys go to the next level? Right. So, you know, I think that the interesting thing is, is when you look at some of the themes here that we've talked about, it's about um, unlocking innovation, it's about providing ways that developers in a self-service way can get at uh, the data, the resources that they need um, as they need them um, to build these types of new types of applications. And the AccuWeather uh, uh, experience and, and their journey on that's a great example of it. Look, you know, moving from, from a set of enterprise customers that they were serving very well to the fact that really a whole ecosystem of applications need ac needs access to weather data, and they knew that if they could just unlock that, yep. uh, that that would be an incredibly powerful thing. So we see a lot of variants of that, and in fact, a lot of what you see, saw in the announcements this morning um, with Google Cloud is part of that. You know, Google Cloud is very much about taking these resources that Google has built that were available to a select few and unlocking those in a self-service fashion but in a standard way that developers anywhere, and now with Anthos, which is hybrid and multi-cloud, wherever they are, being able to unlock those capabilities. So, well, I view this as a continuation of the API promise. And, um, you know, we're very excited about this because what we're seeing is more and more applications that are being built across uh, using APIs in more and more environments. Um, the great thing for Apigee is that anytime people are trying to consume APIs in a self-service fashion, an agile way, we're able to add value on that. So Allison Wagner earlier, was, we asked her about the brand promise and she said, we want our customers' customers. We want to help them innovate all the way down to our customers' customers' level. So we're thinking about weather. Weather gets a bad rap, right? I mean, for, for, That's for, how you look for, at for, it. For, <laughs> but for years, everybody make, make jokes about the weather, but the weather has been like an uncannily accurate these days. It used to be art, now it's becoming right. more science. Yeah. So in the spirit of innovation, talk about what's happening just in terms of predicting, whether it's you know, big events, hurricanes, tornadoes, well, yeah. and, and some of the innovation that's occurring on that end. Well, I mean, to look at it from a broader standpoint too, the weather impacts everything. I mean, as we say, you look at all the different products out there in the marketplace that use weather to enhance them. So there's things you can do for actionable decisions too. It's not just what is the weather, it is how can the weather impact what I'm doing next, what I'm doing, where I go, what I wear, how I feel even. Like I said, every day you make a conscious and subconscious decision based on the weather. So when you can put that into products and tools and services to help make those actionable decisions for the users, that makes it a very, very powerful product. So that's why a lot of people are always seeking out weather data to use it to enhance their products. So give us an example. Um, let's so, a famous story I even told just in my session earlier, a connected inhaler company named Cohero. They use our APIs by calling our current conditions every time a user had a respiratory attack. Over time, it started to build a database as the user was using their inhaler. It then used machine learning to kind of find potential weather triggers and learn pattern recognition to find in the future, based on our forecast API, when might, might that user have another attack. So by this, it's a connected health product that's helping them monitor their own health and keep them safe and keep them prepared as opposed to being reactive. So the inhaler is instrumented. Yeah. Right, sending data to the that's cloud. A, and and that's, just, yeah. that's just one product. I mean, there's all kinds of things, connected well, this, thermostats and connected This, this homes. talks about the creativity of the application developer. And yeah. I think this highlights to me what DevOps is all about and what cloud and APIs is all about because you're exposing your resource, yeah. your product, you don't have to have a biz dev guy going, hey, let's target the, uh, the pollen application market. Well, what the hell does that mean? You put the creativity at the, in the edge, the data gets integrated into the application, this kind of kind of hits at on the core cloud value proposition, which is let the data drive the value from the app developer. Without your data, that app doesn't have the value. Right. And there's multiple instances of where, what it could mean. The most valuable. It could be a golf app for crying out loud. Lightning yeah. app. It could be whatever. You know? Exactly. So this is kind of the, the notion of cloud productivity. Well, it's a notion of cloud productivity, but it's also this idea of a digital value chain. So, uh, you know, data is products and APIs are products. And, um, and so now we see the emergence of API product managers. Um, uh, you know, uh, uh, you know, th this idea that we're going to go and build a whole ecosystem of products and applications that meet a whole set of customer needs that you might not even initially or ever imagine. Uh, I'm sure you folks see all the time new applications, new use cases, yep. 
Uh, the idea is, you know, can I take this capability or can I take this set of data, package it up as an API that any developer can use in any way that they want to innovate uh, and, and build new functionality around. And it's a very exciting time. It makes developers way more productive than yeah. they could have been in the past. And this talks about the CI, CD pipeline, yes. end-to-end, -end programmable, programmable APIs. But you said something interesting I want to unpack real quick. Yep. Talk about this rise of API product managers because yes. this is really, I think, a statement that not only is the APIs around for a long time it's to stay, but this is instrumental value. Yes. What is an API product manager? Okay, so, what do they do? So it's a new concept that has, um, well, I shouldn't say it's a total new concept. If you've talked to companies uh, that have provided APIs, you go back to the, the early days of, of um, uh, you know, folks like eBay or Flickr, or all of these, the idea was that you can completely reinvent your business and the way that you partner with other companies by using APIs to tie these businesses together. And what you've now seen has been, really I'd say over the last five years, it's become a mainstream thing. You've got uh, thousands of people out there in enterprises and internet companies and all sorts of uh, industries that, that are API product managers who are going and looking at how do I pack it up, package up the capabilities, um, the business processes, the data that my business um, has built and enable other companies, other developers to go and package these and embed them in the products and services that they're building. And, uh, and that's the job of an API product manager. It's just like a product manager that you would have for, for any other product, but what they're thinking about is how do they make their API successful. And to Mark's point, they were, he saw money being left on the table, small little tweak, now opens up a new yeah. product line exactly. at, a, at an economic model, the cost structure that's <laughs> it's, pretty it's damn shifting, good. It's shifting to this idea of platform business models. And it's a super yeah. exciting thing that we're seeing. Uh, the companies that successfully do it, they see huge growth. Uh, and we think that every business is going to have to transition into this API product model eventually. Mark, what's the, what's the role of the data scientist? Obviously very important in your organization. And the relationship between the data scientists and the developers, and then specifically, what is Google doing to help them coordinate and collaborate better, instead of wrangling data all day? <laughs> yeah, I mean, so for a data scientist, I mean, we actually have multiple areas, obviously. We're studying the weather data itself, but then we're stu studying the uh, use case of the data, how they're actually ingesting it itself. But um, incorporating that into our products and services, I mean, I don't know, I mean, that's kind of a... I mean, that data's everywhere. The key is the yeah. applications have the data built in. This is to your point about Not the... Not necessarily incorporating it in, but, but to, to collaborate on creating products, right? I mean, you're doing a lot of data science. You got application developers, right? You're talking about tooling. Right. Are, are they just sort of separate silos, or are they... No, I mean, we obviously have to have an understanding of what data is going to be successful, what's going to be ingested, and the easiest way to ingest it as well. So, we obviously are analyzing it from that sense. It's... All right, so take a step back for a second. On this Google Next, Mark, what's your impression of the show this year? What's the vibe, what's the day one storyline in your mind? You had a session you were in earlier. What's been some of the feedback? What's, what's it like? Well, for me personally, it's that APIs power everything. So that's obviously what we've been very focused on and that's what the messaging I've been hearing. But yeah, I mean, the vibe has been incredible here. You to obviously be around so many different great minds and the creativity, it's, it's definitely been what was a lot the talk? Fun. What was the session that you did? What was the talk about? Obviously, APIs, what was some of the feedback? Yeah, what I mean, the so the session I gave was uh, how AccuWeather unlocked new business opportunities with APIs. And uh, we got great feedback, it was a full house. Um, I had lots of questions afterwards that followed me out into the hallway. That's why I was actually running here because <laughs> I was being held up. But um, lots of people are interested in learning about this how can they unlock their own opportunity? How to, can they take what they have existing yeah. and bring it to a new audience? What were some of the questions that, that were kind of the thematic, kind of you can stack rank the categorical questions? What were yeah. the main points? The biggest thing was like trying to make decisions about how for us, for example, having an enterprise model already, transitioning that to a self-serve model that actually worked. Before we were kind of engaging with clients directly, so having something that users could look at and on their own immediately engage with and connect with and find ways that they can utilize it for their own business models and purposes. And you got to be psyched, API is a business model, you got API product managers, you got, the, you got the cloud, Anthos, spanning now multiple domain spaces, on-prem, hybrid, multi, Well, that, those last points are very exciting to us. So, 
you know, if you look at it, um, you know, it was um, about two and a half years ago that Apogee became part of Google, and um, GCP got into hybrid and multi-cloud with Apogee, that we were, uh, uh, you know, the definitive API infrastructure for APIs wherever they lived. And what we saw this morning was GCP doubling down in a very big way on hybrid and multi-cloud. And so this is fantastic for this message of APIs everywhere. Um, Apogee is going to be able to sit on top of Anthos and uh, really wherever people are looking at either producing or consuming APIs, um, we'll be able to sit on top of that and uh, uh, make it a lot easier to do, capture that data and build new business models on top of it. Well, I'm going to make a prediction here in theCUBE that Apogee is going to be at the center of the value proposition as those apps get built, people go to the business model, connecting them under the covers is going to be a very interesting opportunity with you guys. It's very so, exciting, very exciting for us. You can hear it here first on theCUBE. Yeah. Of course, theCUBE's looking for a product manager API to handle our CUBE database, so if you're interested, we're always looking for a product manager. API Economy is here. I'm Jeffrey Dave Vellante. Here on theCUBE, day one coverage at Google Next. Stay with us for more after this short break.